and all the way up. No.
reminder to St. Dominic School, who is on Zoom, you do have a music packet, and we went over it this week, okay? Have, try to have a music packet available. Change our hearts, it's time, your word says they can be. Please Change stand. our minds, it's time, your life could make us free. We are the people, your call set apart, Lord, this time. Change our hearts. By your hand to the edge of our dreams, one foot in paradise, one in the waste, drawn by your promises. Still, we are learned by the shadows and the chains we leave behind. The change our hearts. This time, your word says it can be. Change our minds this time. Your life could make us free. We are the people your call set apart. Lord, this time, change our hearts. Lord, this time. Change our hearts.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Thank you very much. Welcome to all of you to our Ash Wednesday Mass. And those of you who are here, and I want to welcome in a special way our school children, families, faculty, and staff who are watching us online uh, to celebrate Ash Wednesday with us. A beautiful day that begins this beautiful and sometimes challenging and difficult season. And uh, it's, it's an important uh, way that we show our love for God by being willing to do extra things, to sacrifice uh, more of ourselves, to give ourselves more in different ways, all so that we can become more like Jesus, so that we can become better people. So let us ask the Lord to help us as we begin this journey of Lent to uh, give it our hearts, give it uh, our, our best efforts, again, truly to become uh, better people, to become more like Jesus himself. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and let us now listen attentively to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly. Gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, Gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. 
Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be, Be merciful, merciful, O Lord, Lord for, for we have, have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, Be merciful O Lord, Lord, for we have, have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. O, o Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Merciful oh, Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is the very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. And may the word of God always be on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not left, let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secrets, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. 
But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Way back about 40 years ago when I was a young Dominican student brother at our House of Studies in Oakland with all the other uh, student brothers, in other words, seminarians preparing to become Dominican uh, brothers or priests, one of my classmates named John uh, loved coffee. He drank coffee all day long really strong coffee. He was addicted to coffee. So one Lent during our formation uh, period, uh, John decided to give up coffee for Lent. It was really hard for him. He went through withdrawals. So by the third day of Lent, it was like the Friday, Saturday after Ash Wednesday, Every one of us, all of the other student brothers, I mean, there are 30 or 40 of us there, we all begged them, please, John, go back to drinking coffee because it's impossible to live with you. You're such a grouch. Stop it. Go back to drinking coffee. So it's a reminder that Lent is ultimately not about giving stuff up. It's not even about ultimately doing extra things. Those are both good things to do for Lent, but ultimately, it's not about those things. Lent is ultimately about becoming more like Jesus. It's becoming, in other words, it's becoming a better person. So whatever you do for Lent or whatever you give up for Lent, do it for that reason, to become more like Jesus, to become a better person. So going back to my example, what's more important, giving up coffee or becoming a better person? becoming a better person, right? What's more important, giving up sweets or becoming a better person? Becoming a better person. What's more important, praying more and going to Mass or becoming a better person, becoming more like Jesus? It's becoming more like Jesus. Now, hopefully, we can do both those things. It's not as if they're mutually exclusive. Yes, give up sweets, give up coffee, give up whatever, the computer, give up whatever. Come to Mass, pray more, yes, but do it so that you can become more like Jesus, so that you can become a better person. So, again, what I'm saying to you is whatever you're going to do for this, and hopefully every one of us here does something, something additional, something, again, either giving up something, sacrificing something that we enjoy, some, some activity or some food, or that we do take on something extra. I, I ask you to ask yourself two very related questions. How is this thing that I'm doing for Lent, how is this, how can this make me more like Jesus? How can this make me a better person? Because that is ultimately what Lent is about. How can it make me more like Jesus? How can it make me a better person? To make this more concrete, I'd like every one of you here, especially you kids that are watching online, your families and, and so on, I'd like you to memorize this scripture citation, this reference. It's the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, so it's in the New Testament. The letter of Paul to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. So Galatians 5, 22 and 23. I want every one of you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, uh, look in that scripture up when you go home. It's where St. Paul lists what he calls the fruit of the Spirit. And these are the qualities that are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are very practical ways to measure whether you and I are becoming more like Jesus, whether we are becoming a better person 
by exhibiting those qualities in a better, deeper, fuller way in our lives. So again, to go back to my other questions, uh, if whatever you're going to do for Lent, is it going to increase? Is it helping you? How can it help you increase those qualities, those very practical qualities? Are you going to be more patient at the end of Lent than you are now? Are you going to try to do that? Are you going to try and be more self-controlled, more generous, more loving, kinder? Those are the things we focus on. And it's not just to give up, uh, you know, certain foods because I want to look better, I want to lose weight. It's not about losing weight. It's not about looking good in your bathing suit for the summer. It's not about seeing if I'm tough enough to let go, to give up whatever. No, it's about becoming more like Jesus, becoming a better person, having these qualities, the fruit of the Spirit, more visible in our lives. Now, there are three traditional Catholic ways of observing that. This has gone on for centuries. Fasting, prayer, and almsgiving. So fasting, again, means giving up food or some food item or giving up something that we enjoy. Again, whether it's uh, television or whatever, right? going to the movies. Of course, we can't go to the movies now during the pandemic, right? It's been a long, a year of Lent. But it's giving up something. And again... The question is, how does giving up, let's say, candy, I give up candy, sweets, every Lent. Now, how does that make me more like Jesus? Well, first of all, it means saying no to myself. You know, we get used to eating whatever we want or doing certain things that we just, all the time. And sometimes it's good for us to say no to myself. It develops a sense of discipline, self-control, that fruit of the Spirit. It means Okay, I can do without this. I don't need that computer or that, that uh, smartphone or watching that program. I don't need that to, to live, to survive. I can do without that. So again, it's a good sense of developing that discipline, saying no to ourselves. It also reminds us to be grateful for what we do have. I can eat candy all I want the rest of the year, but I'm giving it up during Lent to show myself I don't need it, and to build up in myself, wow, how grateful I can be for what I do have, especially for those of us in this country. A lot of countries, you know, the people don't have sweets to eat like we do here. So things like that. So being more grateful and being more aware of and praying for those who don't have the things that we have here. Again, all those kinds of things can go into our fasting, whatever we're giving up, to think in those terms, and that will make us more like Jesus and a better person. If we do prayer, that second S, so fasting prayer is a second traditional Catholic practice. Again, this doesn't mean, doesn't mean just multiplying our fathers and Hail Marys, rosaries. doesn't mean just coming to Mass more often. Again, those are all good things, but we have to ask ourselves why. Ultimately, it's not about the quantity about what we do in terms of prayer. I'm going to read uh, you know, this prayer book more. It's about deepening my relationship with God. That's what prayer during Lent means. How can I deepen my relationship with the Lord? Being more aware of God present and being God being present in my life. And finally, almsgiving. Technically, that means giving money, but ultimately, it means giving more of myself to others, more of my time and energy to others. Now, this pandemic, you know, and hearing people's confessions this whole last year, I hear it from you all, it put, it's put more stress, anxiety on us, living at home in that enclosed situation all day long with your family, loved ones, whoever it might be, and it causes you to be more irritable. It causes us to lose patience, to be uh, less forgiving. So a great way to give alms this Lent is by giving more of myself in terms of asking for forgiveness. The times I've been a jerk just because I've been so irritable because of all this, this stress going on, give alms by, by asking for forgiveness or by giving forgiveness more readily to those that you live with, being a little bit more patient. Again, the fruit of the Spirit, patience, kindness, generosity. All these things are, are, are important for us to live out especially at home. So again, this is just a kind of a broad way to remind us what Lent is about. It's about becoming more like Jesus, becoming a better person, living out the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 
22 to 23. Have a happy Lent. Now we're going to distribute the ashes in a few moments. And like everything this year, it's going to be a little bit different this year. We're going to bless the ashes as usual. But then when, uh, you know, usually when you come up, the, the person giving you the ashes says one of two phrases, repent and believe in the gospel, or remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But to minimize any kind of dialogue between us as you come forward, we're going to say it all at once in the beginning, and then we're going to give you the ashes in silence. The other thing is, instead of marking your foreheads with the ashes so that we don't touch you, and again, run that risk of a contamination, we're going to sprinkle just a little bit of ashes on top of your head. This is what they do in several other countries, including in, uh, in Italy, in Rome, in the Vatican. That's what they do. They sprinkle ashes onto your head. So uh, again, you're just going to come up as you would for communion, two lines here down the aisle and we're just going to sprinkle little ashes on your head, and you go back. You don't say anything. We don't say anything to you, okay? Again, we have to do that this year because of the pandemic, um, but it's still receiving your ashes for Lent. But like I just said, remember what Ash Wednesday is, not, is about. It's not about the ashes. The ashes are not magic. They're just symbols. They are blessed symbols to remind us of what Lent is about. So... Again, I'm sure many of you are here to get those ashes, and that's fine, but it's not about the ashes. It's about what's in our heart. That's what Ash Wednesday is about. That's what Lent is about. That's what our Christian life is about, what's in our hearts. And so now, brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God, our Father, that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who desire not the death of sinners but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers, and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes which we intend to receive upon our heads that we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust may, through a steadfast observance of Lent, give, gain pardon for our sins and newness of life after the likeness of your risen Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now I'm going to say both of those phrases to you, and after I say, finish saying both phrases, I invite you simply to say amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, repent and believe in the gospel, and remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Amen. amen. And now I invite you to come forward as we do in communion, maintain that social distance between you, please. We rise again from ashes, from the good we failed to do. We rise again from ashes, redeemed, O Lord, by you. Our penance, Lord, our sorrow, our grieving hearts renew. An offering of ashes, an offering to you. We offer you our failures, we offer you a tempt. The gifts not fully given, the dreams not fully dreamt, our stumblings give direction, our visions wider view, an offering of ashes, an offering to you. Then raise us up from ashes, your healing ease our pain. Though spring 
bring us turn to winter and sunshine turn to rain. Your rain will nurture growing and create a world anew. An offering of ashes, an offering to you. Give thanks to God the Father, who gave us life and breath. Give thanks to Christ our Savior, who saved us by his death. Who with the Holy Spirit creates the world anew from an offering of ashes, an offering to you. <clears throat> we rise again from ashes, from the good we fail to do. We rise again from ashes, redeemed, O Lord, by you. Our penance, Lord, our sorrow, our grieving hearts renew. An offering of ashes, an offering to you. And now I invite us to stand and offer our prayers to the Lord. Just a second, can you hold off on the collection until we finish the prayers? Thank you. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful season of Lent that you give to us each year to remind us how much we need you, how much we need to grow in our lives. So please help us to make uh, a worthy Lent with our sacrifices, with our extra uh, activities and religious observances so that we may truly become more like you, Lord Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we lift up toes, those of, uh, of those to you who are not able to join us at Mass today because of their uh, needs to be, their need to be safe, those who are suffering in any way from the pandemic, either through sickness or caring for others or struggling economically that you might lift us all up, Lord, uh, during this, these coming months. May the vaccinations have a, a lasting effect as we, so that we can overcome this pandemic and return to a normal, more normal life. 
and give us uh, a sense of your presence with us in our struggles. We pray to the Lord. We pray especially, Lord, that you help us live out our Lenten observances, our Christian faith in our homes, in our workplaces, uh, those, those areas where it is so often difficult to be patient and loving and generous and forgiving with those that are closest to us. Help us, Lord, to be like you, especially in those places. We pray to the Lord. We continue to remember those who have died because of the, the virus and from other causes. May you, Lord, uh, bless them and help them to be with you um, in that life that awaits all of us. And uh, for this, we pray to the Lord. And our Mass this morning is especially offered for the repose of Rosa Solis. So we remember her to the Lord and her loved ones who mourn her loss. We pray to the Lord. And now in a few moments of silence, let us offer to God our personal needs. For all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Holy God, again, we thank you and praise you for the many ways you show us your love and forgiveness, and may that uh, knowledge of, of your goodness to us reflect in the way that we live our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Knocks like Jesus. Somebody's knocking at your door. Knocks like Jesus. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Can you hear him? Somebody's knocking at your door. Can you hear him? Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, and that we ourselves might be acceptable to our loving and almighty God. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleansed from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. 
And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven, and earth, heaven, heaven, and earth, are full of your Sing to the Lord Most High, sing to the Lord Most High. Blessed, blessed is He, blessed, blessed is He, who comes in the name of the Lord, who comes in the name of the Lord. Sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing to the Lord Most High, sing to the Lord Most High. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you. 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now we stand and join together in praying the words that Jesus, our Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us safely now offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, on you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. My brothers and sisters, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this time, we will say together once again the act of spiritual communion to join those who are not able to receive communion with us this day. Please repeat, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. and unite myself wholly to you. 
Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Thank you all for coming to Mass. Those that are present and those of you who are watching online, thank you for joining us this morning. We have another service, just a liturgy of the word, not a Mass, and ashes at 12 noon, a Mass at 6 o'clock. Both of those are in English. And then at 7 o'clock, a Mass in Spanish. So in case anybody at home uh, needs to come to church, still you can invite them to those three different services. Um, so again, thank you so much for being here. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Save your people, O Lord. Show us a way to come home. We have been wandering far from your love. Save your people, O Lord. We have been wandering far from your love. I'm sorry? Uh, we just finished the Mass, so we have another service.